Have you ever wanted to say something, but you just couldn't find the right words? Well, algebraic expressions are calculating things when you just can't find the right numbers. My name is Miss Danielson, and today I'm going to be taking you through a lesson on setting up expressions. Let's start by getting the vocabulary so we can express ourselves at least in words. First of all, algebra is the use of letters or symbols in the place of unknown values in a calculation. Variables are the letters or symbols that we use in algebra for our expressions or equations. They take the place of the unknown values that we need in order to perform a calculation. Expressions is the use of variables, numbers, and operations to explain how we would calculate some value if we had all the given information. The ability to set up expressions is a very valuable tool so that later when you have this information, you can then work out this answer. Let's start with an example. If I have 12 full boxes of pens, how many pens do I have? Now it would be impossible for me to answer this question because there's information missing. If we're setting up an expression for the number of pens I have, I can write a calculation and just substitute the missing information with a letter or a symbol. The first step to setting out an expression is to determine what information I need and what information is missing to be able to calculate the answer. Then we make a let statement to identify the variable or the letter that we will use to replace the number that we don't know. So in this example, I don't know how many pens are in a box. So my let statement is let b equal the number of pens in each box. Your let statement should be fairly clear and should be a full sentence. Don't ever just write let b equal box because that could mean the price of the box, the size of the box, the weight of the box, or any other value relating to the box. Next, how could we calculate this answer? if we had all the necessary information. So if I knew how many pens were in a box, how would I calculate the total number of pens I had? I would say that the total number of pens is equal to 12 times the number of pens in each box. So my step two is to use the variable that we just defined, so use b, in the place of the missing information to set up an expression. So I would write that as 12 times b. And in algebra, we try to simplify our expressions as much as possible. When we have a number multiplied by a letter, we could just write them together, 12b. Let's try another example. A rectangle has a length which is twice as long as its width. Work out the expression for its perimeter and area. For any type of question like this, I always like to have a diagram. So if they don't give you a diagram, you should sketch your own. If they do give you a diagram, you should copy it so that you can fill in the missing information. First of all, what is the missing value or values that I need to be able to calculate this answer? I would need to know what the length and width are, right? So I'll start by making my let statements. Let W represent the width of the rectangle and let L represent the length of the rectangle. But we were given more information in this question. We are told that the length is twice as long as the width. So we could then say that instead of L is the length of the rectangle, two W's, which is twice the width, that's the same as the length of the rectangle. Try to write your expressions with as few variables as possible. That's going to help us to simplify our expression at the end. Next, how would I calculate our answer if I had all the necessary information? If I knew what the length and the width were, I would work out the perimeter by adding up all of the lengths and all of the widths. So I would say the perimeter is equal to two lengths plus two widths. Knowing that the length is twice the width, I can replace that, however, using the variables I've defined and say that length is two w's. So I would write perimeter is equal to two times two w's plus the two widths. And of course, I always simplify whenever possible. So if I've got two sets of lengths, which is two w each, two times two w would be four w. 
So I have all together six W as my perimeter. Now, unfortunately, unless I know what the width is, that's as far as I can take it. We can't work out the perimeter or the width unless we have some more information. If they told us the width, we could work out the perimeter. Or if they told us the perimeter, we could work backwards to find the width. But that would make this expression an equation because it would be set equal to something. If it's just an expression with some unknown value, all we can do is simplify or rearrange that expression. So we've got our answer, 6w. Let's try working out the area now. For the area, step one, we would need to know what the length and width are. So we've made our let statements. The width is w and the length is 2w. Step two, if I knew what the length and width were, how would I work out the area? Area would be equal to the length times the width. So since I know that the length is 2w, I'll substitute that into my formula. I'll write 2w times w. General good practice is when you replace some variable with some other number or variable or expression in this case, we put it in brackets so we can see where that has suddenly come from. The L was replaced by the 2w I have here in brackets. And step three, we need to simplify whenever possible. 2w means 2 times w times another w would be w with a little 2, that's w squared. So our answer as our expression for the area is 2w squared. Again, if I don't know what the width is, I can't take this any further to work out the area. If they told us the area, I might be able to set up an equation equal to this and rearrange that equation to find the width. But since I'm not given that extra hint, that's as far as I can take it. Let's try another example. This time, our question involves money. Sweets in a candy shop are sold for 15 cents each. Work out the expression for the total cost of S sweets. A in cents and B in dollars. This time, the variable was defined in the question. The information that's missing, which I need to calculate this answer, is the number of sweets. So I'll make it really clear what S represents. Let S represent the number of sweets. So to solve for question A, how would I calculate the cost of S sweets in cents? I would multiply the price of the sweets by the number of sweets I'm buying. So using my variable S, I would say that this is S times 15. Or, as this is algebra, and I always like to simplify my expression, a number times a letter, we always write as simply the number in front of the letter, 15S. The cost of the sweets would be 15 S cents. For question B, working this out in dollars, I'm going to want to convert my cents to dollars first. There are 100 cents in one dollar. So 15 cents in dollars would be 15 hundredths of a dollar. So this would be S times 15 hundredths, or 15 hundredths S dollars. I hope you're with me with this. Now, if this is seeming a bit too simple, let's get into something a little bit more challenging now. Example four, a vineyard sells 17 cases of wine to a restaurant at a set price per case. A, work out the expression, the total price of the wine. Once again, start by identifying the missing information. I know that they sold 17 cases, but I don't know the price that they're selling it at. So I'll write a let statement about the price of the wine. I'm going to let C represent the cost of one case of wine. Now that I've got a variable to work with, how would I work out the total price of the wine? If they sell 17 cases at a price of C per case, I would simply do C times 17. The cost of a case multiplied by the number of cases I'm selling. Again, a number times a letter, we can just write the number in front of the letter. So that's 17C. Wine would cost 17C. 
Part B, the restaurant owner tries one bottle, but then sells the rest for 20 euros per bottle. Work out an expression for the total the restaurant earned. Let's have a think about this. Have we got all of the values that we need in order to work this out? Or is there some value that's missing? Be careful because the restaurant is selling by the bottle, not by the case. So the missing information is how many bottles are there altogether? And we can work that out by knowing how many bottles there are in each case. So let's make our let statement. I'm going to let B represent the number of bottles in each of the cases of wine. That way, I will know how many bottles there are in total. If there were 17 cases of wine, I would have 17 times B bottles. But remember, the restaurant drank one bottle for himself to try it out. The remaining bottles were all sold for 20 euros per bottle. So the restaurant's earnings would be 20 times the number of bottles that were remaining to be sold. That was the 17B that we started with, the 17 cases with B bottles in each one, minus the one bottle that the restaurant owner drank. Of course, we need to simplify this expression whenever possible. And just as we do when we're multiplying a letter by a number, when we're multiplying a bracket by a number, we can just put the number in front of the bracket. But that's not enough to simplify it. We need to remember that when we're multiplying a bracket by some number, all of the terms inside the bracket are being multiplied by that number. So I need to do 20 times the 17b, and I need to do 20 times the minus 1. That's going to be 340b minus 20. If you want to think of this another way, you could think that the owner of this restaurant is going to sell 17 cases of wine, 17 times B, and they're selling each of these bottles at 20 euros per bottle, so 340 times B. However, he drank one of those bottles, so he's lost out on 20 euros worth of sales. Now, since we don't know what B is, we don't know how many bottles there are in each case of wine, we can't take this any further. So that's our simplified expression. The restaurant earnings will be 340B minus 20. Part C asks us to write an expression for the total profit the restaurant will earn. Now here's where we're getting a little bit complex. But what you need to know about profit is profit is the amount of earnings minus the cost of making those earnings. That would be 340B minus 20, minus the 17C that they spent on the cases of wine. Now, once again, there are variables that we don't know the value of, and they are not like variables. They're not the same letter. They don't represent the same values, so we cannot group them together. It's helpful for the examiner to know which variables you've used to understand your expression. So always make sure that your variables are clear. B was the number of bottles of each case of wine, and C was the total cost for a case of wine. If this last example was a bit of a stretch for you, be sure to leave me a comment so I can try and help clarify it. Otherwise, let's get on to the practice exercise. For question one, I want you to work out the perimeter and area of each of these rectangles, and make sure you leave your expression in the simplified form. Remember that the perimeter of a rectangle is adding up all of the outer sides, and the area of a rectangle is length times width. Go ahead and hit pause, copy the diagrams, and work out your answers, and then we'll move on to the next question. All right, I hope you've had a chance to hit pause and work those out. Let's go on to question two and three. A sweet shop sells boxes of sweets in four different sized boxes. Each size of box is a different color. The different box sizes or colors are red, green, blue, and purple. Choose a variable to represent the number of suites in each of these different boxes and write a let statement for each. So I'm making it clear the missing information 
is the number of suites in each of the different boxes. Make sure you make a clear let statement so that we can use your variables in question three. Question three asks you to write simplified expressions for the total number of suites in different numbers and sizes of boxes. Go ahead and hit pause, copy the question, work through your answers, and hit play when you're ready to move on. I hope you had a chance to hit pause and work that out. Let's go on to our last question. How are you doing so far? This last question is a bit of a challenging one. Mandy has a muffin shop where she sells muffins by the box and some customers also buy coffee. Mandy decides to offer her customers a special deal for three weeks. On Friday, every customer gets an extra muffin when they buy a box of muffins and they get an extra two muffins if they buy a box of muffins and a coffee. So that we're clear, let's assume that all of our customers only buy one box of muffins. Write simplified expressions for a total number of muffins she sells on each of these days. On the first Friday, five customers just buy a box of muffins and 14 buy both a box of muffins and a coffee. So think about her special deal that she's offering. On the second Friday, she sells 18 box of muffins and seven of those customers also buy a coffee with their muffins. So that's 18 box of muffins all together and the seven also buy a coffee. On the third Friday, she sells 12 boxes of muffins. So all of the customers except for four also bought the coffee. Go ahead and hit pause. Take your time to copy the question and work that through and hit play when you're ready to start taking up your answers. I hope you had a chance to hit pause because here come your answers. I hope the first question went smoothly for you. Remembering that the perimeter is the sum of all the outer sides. And because these are rectangles, the area is length times width. So for question A, the perimeter would be six plus three A plus two, plus six plus three A plus two. Grouping our likes terms together, that is six A's altogether, and 16, so this is 16 plus six A. For the area, we'll do the length times the width. So using brackets here, I'm gonna do six times the three A plus two. I need to expand that out to simplify it, however, so I'll do six times three A and six times two. For question B, I can show the working in a slightly different way. The perimeter is the sum of all the outer sides, but notice that two of the sides are the same and the other two sides are the same. So I've done two times two B minus eight plus two times 12. So four B minus 16 plus 24, and simplifying that, grouping like terms together, both negative 16 and 24 are number terms, so that together would make eight. This is now four B plus eight. For the area, again, because this is a rectangle, we'll do length times width, so that'll be 12 times, using brackets again, two B minus eight. Expand that out and multiply 12 times the two B and then 12 times the minus eight. So that's 24B minus 96. Finally, question C. Again, I can work out the perimeter is the sum of all the outer sides, but let me show you another way I could write this. I could say that there are two 15s and there are two C minus threes. So I do, if I do 15 plus C minus three and double that, that will give me the sum of all of the sides. Again, I need to simplify this First, I'll try to simplify what's inside the bracket. The C minus three, I cannot simplify, but I can do 15 minus three. Those like terms could be grouped together and that would make 12. So I've got two times 12 plus C and multiplying that through. I Next, working out the area, again, it's length times width as this is a rectangle. So that's going to be 15 times C minus three. If you wrote C minus three times 15, that's fine. But generally, we like to expand our brackets out first by putting the single term in front of the bracket. So I can clearly see that I'm doing 15 times C and 15 times negative three. And again, that's as simple as it gets. 
On to questions two and three. For question two, to write a let statement for all of these different colors and sizes of boxes, I made a single statement that'll make this clear. Let the following represents the number of suites in each of the colored boxes. R is for the number of suites in red boxes, G is for the number of suites in green boxes, B for blue boxes, and P for purple boxes. If I had not written my let statement above, R equals red boxes doesn't really explain to me what R represents. But now that I know R represents the number of suites in red boxes, we could say that seven red boxes would have seven R suites in them. Three green boxes and five purple boxes would have three G plus five P suites in them. And four full blue boxes and three green boxes, which are only half full, would be four B plus three halves of G. Simplify that. We can do three times 0 0.5, which is 1.5. So that would be four B plus 1.5 G. And finally, five red boxes in which each contain one extra suite. So each of them have one more than R and six purple boxes where each is missing two suites. So each of those purple boxes have P minus two in them. So I'll have five times R plus one and six times P minus two. Simplifying that, I'll expand those brackets out. I'll do five times R is five R and five times one is five plus six times P is six P and six times negative two is negative 12. Again, we need to simplify that a little bit more by grouping our like terms. Finally, for our last question, I hope although it wasn't asked for in the question, you noticed there was missing information. We don't know how many muffins there are in each box. So you should have started by making a let statement. Let B represent the number of muffins sold in each box. Now, the letter that you chose to represent the number of muffins in each box doesn't matter so long as you clearly stated that the letter represents the number of muffins per box. For part I, we know that she sold five full boxes of muffins and each of those customers got one extra muffin free. And then she also sold 14 full boxes of muffins, but because these people also bought coffee, they each also got two extra muffins free. Simplifying that, expanding that out, and then grouping like terms, 19B plus 33. On the second Friday, she sells 18 boxes of muffins all together. Seven of those boxes were sold to people who also bought coffee. The rest were sold to people who just bought boxes of muffins. So one way we could work this out is by working out how many people just bought a box of muffins. So 18 minus the seven that also got coffee and say that those people got a box plus one extra muffin. And then say that seven people got a box plus two extra muffins. We could also work this out a different way. And this is maybe gonna take a little bit more thinking. But if 18 boxes of muffins were sold, either with one extra muffin or two extra muffins, we could say that 18 boxes plus one muffin were sold. And these seven people that also bought coffee also got an extra muffin. That's 18 full boxes plus the one extra muffin that always comes free with it. And the seven people who got the coffee, that's seven more muffins. Whichever way you work this out, you will get the same answer. So let's work through the red way first. 18 minus seven, that's 11. 11 people would have bought just the box of muffin, getting the full box plus one free. And seven people bought coffee with their muffins, so they, get the, so they got the full box plus two free muffins. Seven times B plus two would be seven full boxes, plus seven times two is 14 extra free muffins. Let's expand out the first bracket as well. All together, let's group our boxes and let's group our free muffins. So 18B plus 25. Looking at the other method for working out how many muffins she sold, 
we just need to do 18 times b plus 1 and add 7 to that. And simplifying that, again, that's 18b plus 25. Now, this is a fairly high level question, but if you can get to this level, you can set up just about any expression. Let's try the last one, which again was a bit more challenging. On the third Friday, she sells 12 boxes of muffins, and only four of those customers did not buy coffee. 12 minus four people who bought a box of muffins with the coffee, so B plus the two that we get free when we get a coffee, and the four people who just bought the box of muffins, so four times B plus one. Again, there's a more simplified way of working this out, which is just saying that 12 boxes of muffins were sold and four of them were sold with one less muffin. So I'd say 12 times B plus two, assuming everybody got the coffee, but four customers didn't get the coffee, so they didn't get the second extra muffin. So we subtract that from our total. Again, it doesn't matter which of these expressions you started out with, so long as they simplify down to give the same expression. So let's simplify these and see if it works out. For the first one in red, 12 minus 4 means that 8 people bought coffee with their muffins. And 4 times the b plus 1, expanding that out, is 4 times b, gives us the 4b. 4 times the 1 gives us the 4. Expanding out our first bracket, which surely you're getting the hang of this now, and you see that that needs to be simplified. So 12b plus 20. Looking at the simplified method for working this out, we can just multiply the 12 by the b plus 2 and we subtract 4 from that. We get the same simplified answer. Now, I'll bet that was a challenge for you. I hope so anyways, because I'm all about giving you the challenging questions to make sure you'll be ready for just about anything. But if you really are struggling, please leave me a comment and see if I can clarify anything for you. Otherwise, just keep practicing. I'll see you guys soon.